Hello there. You clicked again on the video, didn't you? Yeah, Gon did it, and now you're gonna have to watch the rest of this. Or you can just click. Please don't click. Away. Stop right there and watch the video. Got Schnapple Dude. Watch it. So today we're talking about the best national ideas at the start of the game that does not include formable nations, releasable nations, and it most certainly does not include meme nations. Okay? I know that there's a ton of nations that have insanely great national ideas, and I'll do my best to feature as many of them as possible, but definitely there's gonna be some that will not make it to this list. Doesn't mean that their national ideas are not good it simply means that they didn't make it here maybe they'll make it in a future video and if you feel like another nation that you really enjoy should be here let me know in the comments so first off of course one of the strongest national ideas is bolstered by uh sweden who would have thought a swedish company giving a swedish nation in their game the best national idea? well they're not the best but they're definitely on top 10 best national ideas though they start off with infantry combat ability plus 20 percent and mercenary maintenance minus 15 and hear me out because not only is the infantry combat ability amazing but the mercenary maintenance is best positioned you want the mercenary maintenance early on when you're actually gonna recruit mercenaries rather than getting it later on when you're not gonna freaking use them right you also get land leader shock policies plus one possible discipline plus five cavalry cost reduction manpower increase manpower recovery increase as well as goods produced plus 10 and manpower plus 20% essentially Sweden has insanely great national ideas when it comes to their military let's face it 5% discipline and 10 20% infantry combat ability is insane but they also get the goods produce modifier which makes a big difference because they also have access to the Dallas Kogan copper mine which in 1.34 also gets the monument this copper mine essentially can give you hundreds of ducats and by getting the goods produced modifier you increase that by 10% so you get an extra couple tens of ducats from this one province next up we have a slightly smaller nation here i am talking of course about saluzzo saluzzo as some of you know is a really great nation because of its national ideas and that's pretty much it does not have a national uh, mission set or anything of the sort well it has the generic italian mission set the national ideas are absolutely perfectly tailored for this nation because you get infantry combat ability which helps out with the, your early wars as well as the aggressive expansion impact you're in the most aggressive expansion intense region of the world north italy which has the highest amount of development and it's also a part of the holy roman empire that aggressive expansion reduction from the moment that you start the game is of massive help and then eventually once you get your ambition you get core creation cost minus 15 percent you also get provincial trade power modifier plus 10 goods produced plus 10 morale of armies plus 10 movement speed plus 15 percent trade steering plus 20 and missionary strength and some national tax not gonna lie the national tax is crap but everything else is absolutely amazing and the best part is not only does it have great military ideas the insane aggressive expansion uh, reduction but the economic boost is massive because trade steering is important trade power is amazing and goods produced means you're getting more money overall from your provinces and you're going to be getting provinces in the Italian peninsula which is one of the best trade areas as well as one of the best production areas in the world and if you know what you're doing you can keep it as the best production and trade area in the world a nation hiding in plain sight that's right we're talking about the longest nation <laughs> at the start if you really look at the map it actually looks like a big shark can someone draw a Polish shark please in the meme channel i'd appreciate that <laughs> poland does have insane national ideas it has ca cavalry cost and uh, max promoted cultures at the start it's not amazing but then the bangers start rolling in with production efficiency war exhaustion reduction and stability cost manpower plus 25 and infantry combat ability plus 10 percent calf combat ability plus 33 and cav to infantry ratio plus 10 regiment cost which means uh, your units are essentially 10 percent cheaper discipline plus 5 and morale of armies plus 15 honestly if this nation had discipline as well this would be better than prussia in my opinion because of the mixture between really overpowered uh, military ideas and economic ideas of course prussia is better but prussia is a formable so it's not going to be on this list sadly however poland is a really great nation from a national idea perspective and deserves to be on this list next up on this list is of course bengal bengal is a very unique nation because it starts in one of the greatest playing toll areas of the map as well as it has some of the best 
messed <laughs> some of the best national ideas so it has a mixture of both military playing toll and economic so it's a bit of a trio over there you start off with the national manpower plus 15 and infantry combat ability this is going to be of massive help dealing with your early wars it's going to help out so much winning those early wars especially against orisa which should be your first war you also have a core on orisa so you can use this to declare war on 1444 eventually you also get artillery damage from back row plus 15 massively underrated national idea or ambition in this case artillery damage from back row is absolutely insane for the mid to late game or whenever you do have the artillery to start shooting right you also get trade efficiency which is really vital because you also have access to some of the best trade nodes here if you want to and you can you can eventually block all of the trade from going outside of india once you conquer all of india right and by blocking all that trade you get massive amounts of money from just trade alone you also get army tradition 0.5 lat which which is super super good cannot overestimate how much army tradition is always going to bring to the table for any nation in eu4 then you get dev cost reduction minus 10 percent which is massive if you couple this with your national ideas that also give some dev cost reduction in certain areas and so on you can uh, really play super tall as this nation if you don't want to conquer all of india of course you also get idea cost reduction sadly this would have been a lot more efficient if it was the first idea they would unlock right because then the rest of the ideas would be super cheap but still even as the fourth idea it's super super worth it so you can unlock this around the time they get military admin tech 7 and then you get you know your second idea unlocked then you get leader shock plus one tax not amazing but you do finish this off with goods produce modifier plus 10 which is absolutely great goods produce modifier if you guys are not aware is one of the best uh economic modifiers you can have in the game because it affects everything right it affects the amount of stuff that you produce it affects the amount of stuff that you trade essentially it just overall increases your economy by that particular percentage but this video would not be complete of course without the nation of Florence which has the Tuscan ideas that means Florence as well as Tuscany whenever it's formed have the same national ideas now the best part is that this country starts from the very beginning with dev cost reduction minus 10% sad part is that it also has yearly papal influence plus two which is sad because it kind of blocks you since a lot of the times you're not going to be able to get that much papal influence because the pope's going to hate your guts and they're going to rival you and they're going to try and excommunicate you doesn't always happen and if you're willing to restart the game well if you do restart the game and the pope does not rival you then this is going to be of massive help eventually you also get discipline plus five you also have idea cost and tech cost minus five percent and this is super great not only because idea cost and tech cost in general are really good but idea cost is from the first idea that you unlock both of them the first ideas you unlock that means for the rest of the game it's going to be five percent cheaper to unlock technologies and ideas it's absolutely broken man then you also get mercenary maintenance as your second idea and again it's well placed because mercenaries are not going to be used as much in the late to mid game so having this as one of your first two ideas means that you're going to make the most out of it you're going to take advantage of it and you're going to have really cheap mercenaries that you're going to be recruiting you also get interest per annum minus 0 0.5 which is super good especially since you topple this up with the interest per annum that you get from uh, Medici bank ledgers which means that you're going to have by default minus one interest per annum for your loans add a few other things to this like uh, your economic minus 0 0.5 interest per annum admin ideas minus 0 0.5 interest per annum and you get the monuments from the new world and other parts that also offer interest per annum reduction and you can literally have every single one of your loans cost one percent interest that means you don't need to take the burger loans your regular loans are going to be one percent loans that toppled up with the amount of loans that florence normally can take you'll be able to get hundreds look at this 101 bank loans at the same time you'll be able to get two three hundred loans as a big nation whenever you expand and you take all of the italian parts you're going to take massive amount of loans you can invest those loans in your country and then you can pay them off afterwards with the uh amount of money that you made from building those specific buildings it's just a snowball effect that florence slash Tuscany has that makes them an absolutely great nation but that being said you also get because we're talking about national ideas here right so let's continue with that you also get prestige trade efficiency plus 15 percent and you are in one of the best trade nodes here so that's going to really boost up your economy topple that up with production efficiency which also increases your amount of money that you get from your provinces and you finish it off with a nice and sweet national manpower plus 25 this is the most well-balanced and most uh, beautiful idea set in my opinion for playing 
playing tall nations better yet for players that enjoy chill yet super powerful medium-sized country there's two japanese nations that have really great national ideas i'm gonna cover both of them in this video but i do have to say that out of the two of them i personally think that shimazu has the best national ideas out of all the japanese uh, daimyos because they got infantry combat ability plus 10 percent yearly army tradition minus one percent which is freaking insane as well as uh, tax as your ambition which is crap but then you get morale of armies plus 10 percent manpower plus 15 percent recovery speed production efficiency discipline land fire damage trade steering plus 20 percent and tech cost minus five granted the tech cost would have been a lot better if it was a little bit earlier but overall these are absolutely insane military ideas toppled up with a couple of uh, economic ideas let's say shimazu is absolutely brilliant when it comes to that one of the best highlights for military nations we also have oda on the same planes here now the difference is oda has morale of armies and infantry combat ability from the start which is better than shimazu in my opinion but then it's a little bit different right so we do have goods produced plus 10 percent which affects your economy massively you do have core creation cost minus 10 percent and province war score cost so that means if you're planning to expand a lot maybe do a world conquest or something of the sorts then oda is obviously better than shimazu because it has this particular national idea however you get land leader shock plus one land leader siege plus one these two ideas are great because they guarantee that you're gonna have one shock and one fire or sorry one siege for all of your leaders but here's the thing in the mid to late game when you're gonna unlock these ideas you're gonna have high army tradition anyway and shimazu already has the minus one yearly army tradition dk reduction shimazu is gonna have an easier time keeping its army tradition higher so because of that these two siege pips guaranteed by oda are negated by shimazu's yearly army tradition dk one percent because shimazu will likely get four extra pips from the difference in uh, army tradition between shimazu and oda also land fire damage is amazing tech cost minus five same like shimazu and national manpower plus 20 percent is great but like i said overall shimazu has better ideas since these two and the land leader fire at the end as well so these three ideas that the oda have are included in one idea that shimazu has most people don't see it that way but i do because let's face it mid to late game you will have 90 to 100 army tradition continuously if you're playing a conquest game or something of the sorts also want to give a fairly easy shout out to his kaifa here a nation that not many people know exist on the map even has some pretty insane ideas you get national tax when it matters which means after you start switching to production and trade as your main sources of income and tax is irrelevant you don't unlock tax as your last idea like some other nations do right you just have it from the start when it does matter which makes a big difference in my opinion then you also get shock damage received minus 10 percent discipline plus five fort defense plus 20 manpower plus 15 morale of armies and cavalry combat ability plus 10 and you also get core creation cost minus 15 and goods produced plus 10 extremely well balanced idea set really well focused on the military aspect as well as gives out decent economic bonuses and if you want to go wide you also get the core creation cost reduction minus 15 percent that also helps massively i have to say there's a lot of nations in this game that have absolutely insane ideas there's the ottomans with amazing ideas there's the oirats pretty much all of the hordes have really great ideas when it comes to playing wide especially i'm not gonna go through all of those and i wanted to show the ideas from the nations not necessarily that go wide but that have a bit of a balance between all different aspects of playing the game so, and that's why i'm gonna finish this off with one of my personal favorite nations that not many people know even exist that's right we're talking about mewar mewar is an indian nation one of the few hindu nations in the northwestern parts of india mewar is a really great nation not only because it has access to the insanely overpowered indian estates that also offer it the rashput regime regiments i don't know if you guys know this but rashput regiments are super super powerful however there's a limit to how many regiments you can have as the rashputs but that being said because we're not talking about the rashput regiments or the national ideas that they have or anything or the national missions that they have or anything we're talking about the national ideas right mewari ideas are infantry combat ability plus 10 percent and infantry cost minus 20 percent that means that your infantry is 20 percent cheaper overall and you also get war exhaustion reduction minus 0.03 when it actually matters in the mid to late game then you also get yearly army tradition
efficient DK reduction minus 1%, which is one of the best ideas in the game from a military perspective because it allows you to get more military tradition compared to everybody else. Because of this, it would be a lot faster for us to gain military tradition, army tradition, and to maintain army tradition above certain percentage, right? You also get prestige, which is decent, and fort defense, but then you get development cost minus 10%, so you can play tall as this nation. And guess what? Mewar is also the only nation in India that has a gold mine because Guja is not in India, it is in Tibet. So what I just said is correct, okay? Don't don't talk to me about differences between Tibet and India, okay? I know where the border is. Don't argue with me. We also get national manpower plus 15%, fire damage plus 10%, and discipline plus 5. Essentially, you get plus 25 fire damage for your infantry units from these three ideas once you topple them up, right? Of course, discipline also gives shock damage. Infantry combat ability also gives shock damage and also gives shock and fire damage reduction minus 5%. That's how discipline works. But I'm just saying, just for the fire inflicted, it's 25% from these three ideas. Not to mention, you get fire damage from your tech 5 because Indians with the Indian uh, units get at tech 5, your first idea, your first units are going to get fire damage. As you go along, fire damage definitely is going to play a massive uh, role in um, the Indian subcontinent. Obviously, you're going to lose track of that as uh, the Europeans get better units than you and everybody else gets better units than you, sadly. But still, the fact that you get access to this from Tech 5 is amazing. That also does mean that you cannot use this from there, but you do get the infantry combat ability from Tech 5, right? You inflict 10% more damage with your boyos. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Check out this awesome video until that time.